So I bought some op amps and I wanted to um, wanted to try them out. And the reason I bought the op amps was that they were uh, high high output current, so they could drive things. And uh, so I was curious on how much can normal op amps drive. So this is a uh, TLO seventy two uh, data sheet. And I looked all over for output current and there is no specification at all. So you have to actually go calculate it. So there is a specification for um, output voltage. So um, if you are operating the device at plus minus 15 volts, then uh, I think we looked at this before once for the output voltage is only plus and minus 12 volts. Um, but that was with only a 10K load. So that's not much of a load at all. Um, and here it drops down to plus and minus 10 volts if you have a 2K load. So if we have uh, 10 volts, is that on camera? Uh, barely. Oh, we have 10 volts and uh, uh, 200K, then we're gonna get uh, five milliamps. So it only drives five milliamps. So um, not much at all. So that's the TL72. The other trans uh, op amp that I was interested in uh, that I have a whole bunch of are the uh, 5532. These are really ubiquitous. They're everywhere in audio equipment and stuff. And uh, their claim to fame is really low noise and, and very cheap. <laughs> and so they have a 10 megahertz uh, gain bandwidth and uh, input noise is five nanovolts per root hertz. They're, they're just really nice little quiet uh, low distortion um, devices. There's a nice graph here of uh, total harmonic distortion. So they're 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 very good. So I thought, okay, well, well, what what's the drive, what's the drive capability of these? And so I looked for output current on these, and guess what? I couldn't find any. But I did find a graph. So a lot of times you have to go to the graph. Uh, let's see, that's a different, that's a different op amp. Um, so this is the, let me zoom in a bit. This is the um, graph that we would be interested in. This is maximum output voltage versus load resistance. So the same spec that the uh, TLO72 gave us in numbers, they're giving it in a graph. And so you can see here that at, uh, you know, 10K load resistance, then it swings full. And then it does pretty well up to about this point, and then it starts falling off. And so um, let's go ahead and pick the uh, 10 volt, the 10 volt point. So here's the 10 volts here, here's 10 volts here. So it's this resistance here, which is 200 ohms. So the other one said plus or minus 10 volts at uh, what 2,000 ohms. This one does it at 200 ohms. Uh, so this one gets up to around 50 milliamps. Um, not bad. Um, more than I more than I expected. So uh, of course these are bipolar designs, so they're good. You might think that the uh, the CMOS design one would uh, have a bunch of good output grunt current as well, but it doesn't seem to be. I think these might be um, FET inputs, but still bipolar outputs, and these are more low current. Uh, you know, low, low supply current than um, kind of what their claim to fame is. So over here, we're maybe at 50 milliamps, um, and that is a maximum. So it doesn't really say what typical is. Um, maximum versus load resistance maximum. No, this would be a this would be a worst case, I guess. Okay, so the um, uh, device that I purchased is a, 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 a four five five six, and its claim to fame right here in the in the <laughs> in the title is a high current op amp. So this one's high current, and um, it actually is in the specification. There actually is a output current specification. It's seventy milliamps. And it says right here, you know, features, you know, high supply voltage and high output current and uh, high slew rate. So three volts per microsecond. So this should be able to grunt, grunt some things. It has uh, quite a good gain bandwidth, eight megahertz. 
Um, 10 nanovolts, so not as good as, uh, what was this one again? This one had uh, five nanovolts per root hertz. This is 10 nanovolts per root hertz, so this is twice as noisy. Um, but if we take a look at its specification, let's see, where can we find it? Um, uh, output voltage frequency, frequency, here we go. Maximum output voltage versus output current. So there we go. So there's a nice graph on, oh, there's a nice graph on this part. Okay. So this graph is output swing versus output current. Instead of resistors, resistance, it actually says current. And so um, it's swinging quite a bit. It's swinging here. Let's see, our supply current, our supply voltage again is plus or minus 15, but this thing's swinging about plus or minus 13 volts. So it's actually doing better on the output stage. And then we can get up here to, let's see, this is 50, 60, 70, 50, 60, 70, 80, let's see, at 100. At 10 volts swing, we're still here at around uh, 90 milliamps. So yeah, these things are um, under uh, uh, under similar conditions. These things will 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 pump out about 90 milliamps. Um, so so much much nicer. And uh, I thought this might be a good part to uh, drive an LED with, since I can get nice lots of current out of it. Um, I know it's it's for audio applications, but since it's a high output, I thought well, I can use it for maybe driving an LED. Um, I have a other circuit in mind. Um, so yeah, so let's hook one up and uh, see how these compare on uh, on their output, see if they match the data sheet or not. All right, uh, so I have on the uh, breadboard here uh, a TL072 op amp. Um, I'm operating it at plus, plus or minus 15 volts uh, as per the data sheet. And I'm inputting a 10, uh, 10 volt peak to peak uh, sine wave. So we are right at the limit there. And we see that we're getting a 10 volt peak to peak here. These are five volts per division. So uh, minus 10 and plus 10. So, all right. So I'm uh, loading it with a thousand ohms, which is twice the data sheet. Um, so we're driving 10 milliamps instead of 5 milliamps. So it's only rated to 5 milliamps, but we're getting 10 milliamps out of it. So that's pretty good. Now I'm going to put another 1000 ohm resistor in, in um, parallel. So it'll be 500 ohms. And you can see that we've clipped. So it definitely will not take 500 ohms, um, but it will take, uh, we'll take 1000 ohms. So double the data sheet. Excellent. Okay. So let's change out op amps and um, let's see, let me get my box of op amps here. Let me put in the uh, 5532 and we'll see how that one does. All right, well, now we have the uh, 5532 um, op amp in here and it's doing well with a thousand ohms. So that's 10 milliamps. And let's hook up the 500 ohms. And it's starting to flat spot on that. So uh, it will not handle 500. Now, I think to the data sheet it said it should, right? Um, the data sheet says that a load resistance of 500 ohms, ah, yeah, should be able to do 500 ohms. Hmm. So it's not, it's not meeting the data sheet. Interesting. I wonder if these are typical, typicals or maximum it says maximum output voltage. Oh, it says maximum output voltage. I don't know. The data sheet's a bit ambiguous about this, but anyway, it will not handle. It will not handle this. So let's let, let's try the last op amp, which is the high current one. Let's see if the high current one can uh, can survive this. This is the um, 
four five six two whose data sheet says it's good for high current. So this one has some problems. Interesting. Uh, it might not be unity gain stable. I didn't check that. Uh, 5562. Uh, where's my data sheet for the 5562? Wait a minute. Oh, this is the wrong. Uh, I put in the wrong op amp. <laughs> 44562. Four, yeah, this is a really low noise one. Wrong op amp. So, yeah, don't use that one. I don't think that one is unity stable. Anyway, it's for a different application. Okay, so what we want is the 4556, uh, and I have that here. 4556 is the high current one. I thought that other part number didn't sound familiar, but anyway. Let's pop in the high current one. And uh, it's having problems too. Maybe my, maybe, my, maybe my setup has gone funny. Oh, maybe, oh, there we go. Oh, it's my setup. I'm sorry. So that other op amp was fine. It was just my, my breadboard. Problem with these breadboards is sometimes it's really hard to get good, good electrical contact on things. And, um, certain breadboards are better than others. Uh, this one seems to be not happy, not happy around the, around the input or around the supply voltage. Interesting. Which one is different? Hmm. I don't know. Let me go back to an op amp that we've already used. Let me go back to the uh, 5532, see if it's still act acting the same. Eh, it looks a bit funny too. So something's gone funny with the breadboard here. Something has gone funny with the grounds or capacitance. There we go. Uh, ah, it's uh, bypassing. I don't have any bypassing on this board. So if I if I grab the uh, the power supply, it calms down. So it's just it's just bypassing problems. I don't want to go through the hassle of doing all of that. So let's go ahead and put in the. Uh, uh, four, five, five, six, which is the high current version. And we'll ignore that funniness on the signal. And now let's go, that's a thousand ohms. Let's go to 500 ohms. And yeah, no problem at all. So let me, uh, let me stick this in the breadboard. So it's hardwired. There we go. So now we're ha we have 500 ohms. Uh, going in and, it, and it's just fine. So 10 volts, um, 500 ohms is 1 50th. So yeah, so that's what, 20? All right, so I did the calculation. Uh, 10 volts at 70 milliamps is 140 uh, ohms. Um, I got a funny number, that's not right. 10. 0.07 divide. Oh, okay. 142 ohms. So let me take out these resistors and let me put in a 150 ohm resistor. And look at that. Perfect. Very, very nice. So this is definitely a high current op amp. Um, so quite pleased with that. And we could try a uh, 100 ohm resistor. Let's do that. Let's push it hard and see if uh, see if it starts to fail or not. Okay. Out with the 150 and in with the 100. Let's see what that does. Here we go. 100 ohms now. No problem. So yeah, so this is a great little op amp. I like it. Um, it is getting toasty. It is getting a little warm, but not too bad. But it's uh, driving into, oh, there we go. It's starting to, as it's heating up, it's starting to uh, drop a little bit. So definitely will not take the, uh, 
will not take the hundred ohms for very long. It starts to starts to get toasty and then its performance drops down. So we'll put the 150 back in, which is where it's specified. And yeah, it's just fine there. So that's cool. Um, got a high high current output op amp and um, well, high <laughs> high current 70 milliamps. Um, but that should be able to drive an LED really nicely. Looks good.